Everybody. Okay, huh? how about the music? How are we doing, Rex? Here we go live! Yes, we are. I left it, uh, okay. That's here we it. Are. Yeah, here we go. We are there. How's it going? Happy hump day! Yeah, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's January 12th. We're yes, back. Yes, it is. Here we are. Let me get you guys up here so I can see my peoples. There we are. It says I'm live. I'll wait till we load so I can see your comments. <laughs> How are you guys all this Wednesday? I'm Lisa. I'm Gary. And we are here to talk about real estate. GaryLisa.com. Your real estate edge. Hey, that's it. Hey, we got that part down. Right? <laughs> We've said that a few times. <laughs> now, right here in the envelope, uh, per our business partner, is. Go ahead. Question of the day, right? So we will open that up here in a little bit. What we wanted to talk about today were the numbers for 2020. However, all the statistics did not come out. So as we we're waiting on everybody to calculate their numbers, companies like Berkshire Hathaway and Zillow and Trulia, where we get all the national data, we have some California data, Ventura County data. Yeah, so usually the, the it all comes out on the 10th of the month, you know, after the prior month, but we don't have it all for the, this year, so we're going to talk about what everyone's seeing for 2021 um, as we head into this new year, and the real estate my, uh, market and the cycle has been shifted a little bit forward, uh, but we I have uh, all kinds of things to go over about that today. Yes, you do. What do you want to start with? I'd like to start right there at the very top of the page. Okay. And we're talking about Ventura County, California. Yes. Go ahead. Year-to-date average sold price in 2019 was 802,724. Can you believe that? And what was it in 2020? It was 909,996. So let's just go 910,000. We'll round up four dollars. <laughs> And that was the average sold price for 2020 in the whole Ventura County, which is an increase of 13.36% in one year on average sales price. So if we go down and look at that for the December um, month over month, the increase was actually almost 20% increase in, in sold sales prices in Ventura County. Wow. That's amazing. That's just unbelievable. So if you bought a house in Ventura County a year ago, you're looking up almost 20% on your investment. Yeah, uh, uh, averages. Averages. So, yep. Of course, you'll want to get with us on a one-on-one -on -one basis to figure out exactly how much your home has gone up if you want to sell. That's right. The other thing that, that uh, is always interesting is how long is it going to take to sell my house? Question we hear all the time. And the average uh, days on market for the year to date last year, so the whole year of 2020, went down 19.35%. So it went down almost 20%. And then in December, again, it went down the month over month, down to just 36 days on the average. And we're seeing things close uh, faster than that. Uh, but that is just incredible increases um, in how fast things are moving. Absolutely. It's usually home stay on the market a little longer in December and as Lisa said in the past with the shutdowns in mid-March through April it just pretty much cut things way down in fact go ahead. They just move the market forward because usually our spring season is the busy selling se uh, season and that whole uh, market just kind of shifted forward and now what we're seeing is now that we've been in this um, you know new market and new uh, situations where people's working and living and family and homeschooling and all these things that people's needs are changing and that is what's causing people to move um, now because a lot of people have gotten used to working at home and a lot of the companies are going to let people continue working at home because it's working out but that creates some new challenges for your home situation <laughs> yes so that it has and a lot of people that have been working at home locally that have moved out of state, their companies are okay with that too. Yeah. And I find that amazing. It's like, okay, well, how can you commute from Phoenix, Arizona to Ventura County, California? And it's like, I'm not coming into the office anyway. 
So what difference does it make whether I live in Phoenix or whether I live in Ventura County? Yeah, one of the um, things I thought was interesting that I pulled up for, uh, for you guys on what's happening in the market is, uh, first of all, the sales momentum is the highest in 10 years. So it's a great time to be a buyer. Interest rates are record low. And it's a great time to be a seller because, like we just said, prices are up. Inventory is way down. So it's an excellent time to be a seller. But for the first time, um, quality of life has overtaken um, housing affordability as the number one reason that people move. And so that, like I was saying about people's quality of life, I mean, now they have got kids homeschooling, they're working at home, they have a whole different set of needs. We've seen uh, people are moving in with their parents, their parents are moving in with them to help with the kids and the homeschooling. So the quality of life is now the number one reason that people are moving. Um, number two is housing, affordab housing affordability, which has traditionally been the reason that people move. And then number three, closer to family. So those are the top three things, the re uh, reasons that people moved in 2020. Oh, absolutely. And closer to family has everything to do with Zoom school and homeschooling and everybody having to pitch in. Because if you have to work and you're at home and the kids have to be in school, and they do, you need help. You just absolutely do. Family's the best help. Nobody loves your kids more than your, more than you do, other than your grandparents. <laughs> That's right. We know that. Um, another thing. These are the California Association of Realtors, where I got this information. Um, the the people are moving out of state at the highest rate since 2005. So just to give you an idea, in 2005, 31 percent of the people that moved moved out of state. In 2013, 19% of the people that moved, moved out of state. And we're back at 2020, 30% of the people that moved, they moved out of state. And then that led me to another thing I thought was interesting, because of course Ventura County made the list, and that is from LA County, where are people moving to? So what do you guys think? I have one to 10 here on where are people from LA County are moving. Well, I thought the difference there between the height of the move out was 31% in 2005, mm -hmm. and in 2020 it was 30%. So there was only 1% difference. I mean, we're right there. I mean, it's close. But it's the highest since then. Right. So, I mean, it's been 2005 till now, so 15, 16 years um, we're back there. And in 2005 was just at the very, almost the top of the market when people were moving last time, when prices were, you know, peaking up into. In to the peak because 2013 which was kind of after the crash um, it was down to 19 percent so so that was it, uh, interesting isn't it funny how the market always knows where the top is all you have to do is look at the statistics okay didn't yeah, need to throw in, that in there in, in the rear view <laughs> yes <laughs> okay so the top 10 places where yes. people are moving out of LA, LA county. county because of course it's larger county than, than ours so number one um, they moved to the Inland Empire from here. So more inland from LA County is what's called the Inland Empire. Number two, Orange County. Of course, these are all abutting LA County, other ca uh, counties. Well, we, we, the Inland, Inland Empire would be Riverside County. Right. Okay, all right, but and Riverside County encompasses... Might like, be San Bernardino County, it might be, you know... Sure, and then, you know, you get the Inland Empire, part of that is Palm Springs. Too. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So number one in the empire, two Orange County, three Texas, number four Nevada, number five Arizona, number six Kern County, which is just north of LA uh, County. Well, Bakersfield is in Kern County. Right. Sure. And then number seven is Oregon, number eight is Washington State, number nine is Ventura County. <laughs> we made the list. Of course, we're abutting LA County too. And then number 10, Santa Barbara County, so just north of us. So those are the top 10 places that people from L.A. County are moving. And what we found interesting in fourth quarter was most, and we'll say all, but most of the buyers that were coming into our market were coming from L.A. County. And we're number nine on their list, but L.A. County is number one on our buyer list. <laughs> yeah, well, L.A. County is a lot more people in L.A. County than there is in Ventura County. Ventura County, slightly less than a million. Right. Wow, that is amazing stuff right there. Yeah, that's what I thought. It was just um, interesting because I read, we read so much industry stuff, and I thought, well, I'm good. sure there's things that you guys would like to uh, to know. Um, off of another um, real estate website, there's four experts here, and what they're predicting for 2021, 
So one, um, Lawrence Yoon, who's the chief economist for the National Association of Realtors, he says, um, you know, mortgage rates will continue to be favorably low, and we think so too. I mean, we don't, I don't, you know, we don't foresee any big rises in interest rates. They've gone up a little bit this past week with this uncertainty and just the changing and things that are going on, but not, not hugely. I mean, they're still around 3%, which is just crazy, crazy, and lower. I mean, we've seen you know, things as low as 2.5% on a refi, um, single-family home, owner-occupied, crazy rates. Right, and those are 30-year fixed. I mean, if you get down to 15, and we've heard some people going even as low as 10-year fixed rates, uh, just to get a lower interest rate. And, it, and I think it just depends on your situation, too. Mm -hmm. Obviously, 30-year fix is going to be the lowest payment, but if you're getting close to retirement, you're probably looking at a 10 or 15. Or let's say you're wanting to retire early. Let's say you're, you know, you're 35 years old and want to retire by the time you're 50. 15-year might work for you there, too. Yeah. Now, you can always double up on the payments and turn it 30 to 15. So 30 might be the way to go, but definitely... There's options out there today that are just phenomenal. Let us know if you have any questions. We're happy to always <laughs> answer them. Um, Danielle Hale, who's the chief economist at Realtor.com, she they expect a 7% sales growth in 2021 and prices to rise another 5.7% on top of the 2020 high levels already. So that's her prediction. Um, and then um, Robert Dietz, who's the Senior Vice President and Economist for the National Association of Home Build, uh, Builders, he says they expect continued gains for single-family construction, um, buyer traffic will remain strong, and the shifting geography of housing demand to lower density markets. So out of the bigger cities and into the suburbs is what he is seeing along with the historically low interest rates. And then um, Mark Fleming, who's the Chief Economist for First American, he says millennials will continue forming households, which will keep the demand robust for housing. Um, and the big short in housing supply will continue into 2021 because they're just not building them in California as fast as the demand is. Well, yeah, the demand, we're about 80,000 units short per year, and that's been happening in the last decade. So if you take all those numbers together, let's see 80,000 times 10, that's 800,000 units we're short right now right that's yeah. huge it's crazy uh, they're saying another thing that kind of alluded to that i'm lo looking for here is that the record low in, uh, inventory is not even half of what we need um, for a normal or neutral housing mar uh, market a normal or neutral housing market is a six month supply of inventory and we're down under two per, uh, uh, under two months of inventory now, I've heard that a long, long time, where six months is the normal listing inventory. And Have we ever had that here? We've never, never. had that here. <laughs> I'm telling you what, if a seller put a house on the market in Ventura County and said, hey, you know what, we're January, yeah, you're looking at July before we get it sold, you probably would not be hired to represent that seller. Right. Especially today, but I mean, ever. I mean, six months. I can see six months going on in some markets, but not in our market. Right now, in our market, if you put your house on the mar on the market, it's clean and ready to go. You need to be ready to move in 30 days. Because uh, we just had one this last weekend. We were showing uh, multiple offers, just crazy showings, and sold it in a couple days. So that's typical of the market around here. It is. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a couple of days? Are you kidding me? Gee, I want to sell something for, you know, a million dollars and it takes two days to sell it? That's a pretty liquid market. That's like selling a stock, right? It takes three days to get your money out of the stock market. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's really important uh, to get the pro the property clean and, lo and looking great, great photography and get it out there because um, you never know who's out there in the market to buy it. Uh, so we always re uh, recommend um, putting it out on the mar on the mar on the market, giving everybody a chance to see it uh, before you make a decision, because you want to see what offers are going to come in, and it just takes a couple days to have them at least start to get traction. Yeah, it's almost we look at homes and prices every single day, and when we look at a home that just came on the market and there's no photos, and you know the interest is so high. I just really, unless there's extenuating circumstances, and I'm sure there always is, you just have to have your ducks in a row. And that's kind of a, a pretty funny saying. I don't know where that came from, ducks in a row. You know, 
<laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Anybody know where that saying came from? You know, so, I was going to show, I think I could show but, this so you guys can see this. Yeah, so if you've got your photos done, you've got to have everything absolutely ready, and then you push go, and then you come on the open market. Like when Lisa and I market a property, we go on over 300 websites from the very first day, from the very first instance it comes on the market. So can you imagine putting that out there? Now, like I said, there can be extenuating circumstances without any photos. I mean, somebody's going to look at that and they're just going to go to the next one. Now, they might circle back and you could put photos later, but you only get one shot at a first impression on real estate. That's right. And so now with the COVID rules and showing rules, we can show property, we can list, pro list property, but there are some guidelines around that. So everyone is looking online first, so it's really important that your marketing be um, top-notch, and that is what we do. Uh, we've done a lot of showings online, um, FaceTime showings, whatever it takes um, to do it remotely, we can do that. We have all the technology available uh, to show your home uh, online. Yeah, can you believe it? All the technology available, we're sitting here looking at five cameras. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, know? we're streaming to five sites right, uh, right now, so that's kind of cool. <laughs> yes, so yes, we do have the technology. We do have our thumb on the market. That's right. Thumb or finger? It is yep. finger. We have a question. Oh, we do. Okay, we'll repeat the question because you always throw me off when you answer it. Don't tell me. So The I'm like, question is, what uh, are the projections? Will it stay under two months all year? I think so that our um, inventory has been under two months and climbing as low as 1.3 months I've seen during the year on the, on the statistics. Um, but I don't see it growing above that unless we have a huge spring market, which we'd love to have, um, and having a more normal timeline on the spring market. But we'll just see what happens this year. It's going to depend on people's jobs and the vaccine and how soon businesses reopen and things can get more back to a where people can predict with more stability what's happening. Right, and when we're talking under two months, we're talking any price point. I mean, ocean right. fronts at $5 million, you know, you're looking at less than two months. Uh, you know, if it's a starter house, you're a lot less than two right. months. But uh, everything is selling that is for sale. Yeah. Does that sound like? So, is it going to be less than two months? Yes. Oh, well, you're going to show you. I was going to try and show this, but this, I, I don't think you guys can see this, but it's a graph. And it shows these gray lines going straight down on this graph and the maroon line going straight up. And the delta here shows you the inventory because the gray lines here is the listing inventory going straight down on the graph and the sales going up. So we've got sales going like this and inventory going down. I'm not going to do that with one hand. Down and up. Up and Somehow, down. Up, up and, and down. down. Up and down. <laughs> <laughs> shows you the delta between those two is the economic buy, supply and demand line between the buyers and the, and the sellers. <laughs> no, no, that's terrific. And one other question, which we really love to talk about, is rentals. We have a lot of clients that have rental properties. We have rental properties. And they're saying on rents, what are they saying? Who, who did you talk to about the rent? Yes, it sounds well, like you've this, talked to everybody, all yes. the chiefs. Though this was off of, Z of, Z of Zillow. They were talking about um, that 2021 is still going to be uh, a strong year. Um, but that the renters, uh, if you own rental property, there has been some moratoriums on evictions and things. And the rental, rental um, tenants have been hit harder with the job losses and, and things like that. So they're saying that when that the renters catch up and go back to work, that there's going to be some um, negative catch up in the rental uh, income for owners, but that it's going to come back strong that, that this year as people get reemployed um, and the rents, you know, are, are slated to go up. So that even though, you know, 2020 might have been, bump, been bumpy for some of the investors with some of their tenants in place, uh, they're predicting that 2021 is going to go uh, much smoother and all, you know, back to gangbusters. Yeah, and it's different. I mean, if you look at professional property managers, they're always the first to raise the rent for their owners or investors. And this is an amazing statistic. 70% of the mom and pop landlords, that's, you know, somebody that owns one, two, or three properties, are 70% below market value because they love their tenants. They don't feel like raising the rents on their tenant if they're happy and making their payments on time or 
whatever's going on. So isn't that amazing? 70% of the properties in Ventura County are under market value when it comes to rents. Yeah, um, and another uh, quote from Zillow says, the next home shopping season will be the hottest in recent memory. They're talking about the spring season here. Zillow expects a perfect storm of market conditions to create the hottest spring shopping season in recent memory, with sales happen happening quickly and often above the sales price. So that is why it is a great time to list your property if you're thinking about it, um, if you've inherited a property, or you're thinking about selling one of your rental properties, it is a great time right now. Absolutely. Okay, so let's get to the question of the day. You let's do that. that? What is the that? question of the day? Well, it's sealed in here. It is sealed <laughs> in the magic envelope. <laughs> the sealed question of the day. And let me read it to you, get your reaction. Feel free to give us your questions that you want us to answer <laughs> on question of the day. Which statistic is the most important for a seller? Okay, what do you guys think from my people that are, wa that are watching here? What do you think is the most important statistic to a seller? Any comments here? Jump on in here, my, my viewers. Well, what is it? Average sales price. Average <laughs> sales price? <laughs> Why would a seller think that's important? Well, average sales price, I mean, if you boil it right down, you're talking about comparables, right? You know, you want to get local more than the average sales price in the whole county. You want to get average sales price on the street you live in, or the cul-de-sac you're in, or the gated neighborhood where you are, or your oceanfront street. It just depends on where you're at. But yes, average sales price equates to comparables, or I guess the terminology name for that is comps. Yes. Well, we talked about this last week that um, with the comparables, we've had not a huge amount of closed sales. Uh, to help because the market like we said is building you know 20% increase in prices in one year that's a lot and so the, the house next door that closed a month ago closed for less than the one that's closing now that closed three months ago so the appraisers catching up to that um, your comparables are, are increasing yes they are I mean can you believe that you buy a million dollar house a year ago and it's worth a million two today that's two hundred thousand dollars how great is that okay well I think we have Done all we can do right now. I mean, we've got things to do. <laughs> <laughs> so we appreciate you guys watching. We like doing these market updates. So we keep you guys informed what's happening in the real estate market um, here in Ventura County. If you know anyone thinking about buying, selling, investing in real estate or has any questions, has any questions about forbearance um, or any other real estate related things, pick up the phone, give us a call. We'd love to talk to you. You can always find us at GaryAndLisa.com your real estate edge. Thanks for watching.